Did you know that one of the world's most ambitious engineering feats is happening right now in China, and it's reshaping not just landscapes, but the future of millions? Welcome to our deep dive into China's South-North Water Diversion Project, a venture so colossal it's altering the nation's very fabric. In today's exploration, we're unveiling the untold stories behind this epic undertaking. From the massive geographical and demographic shifts it's causing, to the groundbreaking engineering it entails, and the complex environmental and social impacts it's having. Join us as we dissect the eastern, central, and yet to be realized western roots of this grand project, revealing not just the marvels of modern engineering, but also the controversies and challenges it faces. Discover if this massive project is the solution China has been looking for, or a monumental challenge yet to be conquered. China's geographic landscape has played a pivotal role in shaping the course of its civilization and agriculture. The vast expanse of the country encompasses diverse terrains, from the fertile plains along the Yangtze River to the arid expanses of the northern regions. This geographical variation has not only influenced agricultural practices, but has also defined the historical development of communities across the nation. Amidst this geographic diversity, China's population distribution emerges as a fascinating study. The stark contrast between the water-rich south and the water-scarce north has profound implications. The densely populated southern regions, blessed with abundant water resources, have flourished agriculturally, supporting thriving communities. In contrast, the north, grappling with water scarcity, faces unique challenges in sustaining its populace. The region's arid climate and uneven distribution of water resources created an environment where water scarcity became a looming threat to both agricultural productivity and daily life. As populations grew and industrialization took hold, the strain on available water sources intensified, magnifying the need for a comprehensive solution to address this fundamental issue. Amidst this backdrop, in 1952, Mao Zedong recognized the gravity of the water scarcity problem and proposed the ambitious South-North Water Diversion Project, SNWDP. At its core, Mao's vision aimed to transfer water from the relatively water-rich South to the parched Northern regions, thereby providing a sustainable solution to the pressing water shortages. However, the realization of this grand proposal faced numerous challenges and logistical complexities, leading to its eventual delay and dormancy for several decades. Fast forward to the early 2000s, the SNWDP re-emerged as a viable and the best solution to the persistent water scarcity in northern China. With the country experiencing rapid economic growth and urbanization, the water demand surged. The commencement of the SNWDP signified a monumental effort to alleviate the historical water scarcity in northern China. The project involved the construction of an intricate network of canals and pipelines spanning thousands of kilometers to channel water from the Yangtze River in the south to the northern regions. This engineering marvel aimed not only to quench the thirst of arid lands, but also to fuel economic development, support agriculture, and enhance the overall quality of life for the inhabitants of northern China. This project is divided into three different routes and we will carefully look at them one after the other. This part of the project has successfully upgraded the Grand Canal to redirect a portion of the Yangtze River's flow to northern China. This ambitious endeavor commenced on December 27, 2002, and water delivery to Tianjin was supposed to happen in 2013 when the phase was completed. It was also initially designed to deliver water to Shandong Jiangsu and Hebei provinces, but unfortunately the project faced construction delays and challenges related to water pollution. Despite this setback, water finally reached Shandong in 2014, and by October 2017 it had reached Tianjin. The final line of this project spans over 1,152 kilometers, featuring 23 pumping stations with a combined power capacity of 454 megawatts. Notably, the project includes a crucial tunnel beneath the Yellow River, positioned 70 meters below the riverbed 
connecting Dongping and Dongyi counties in Shandong province. The topography of the Yangtze and North China plains necessitates pumping stations to lift water from the Yangtze to the Yellow River crossing. From there, the water flows downhill through an aqueduct to reach its destination. While the eastern route won't supply Beijing, it has become a significant water source for Tianjin, with an expected annual delivery of one cubic kilometer. Make no mistakes, because the eastern route doesn't supply water to Beijing doesn't mean the people residing there are not benefiting. The central route has Beijing covered. The central route stretches from Danjiangkou Reservoir on the Han River to Beijing. Spanning the North China Plain, the central route faced its biggest challenge in constructing two tunnels beneath the Yellow River to facilitate the canal's flow. Construction kicked off in 2004, and by 2008, the 307 km long northern segment was completed for $2 billion. This stretch draws water not from the Han River, but from reservoirs in Hebei province, requiring adjustments in water usage for farmers and industries in the region. The final construction year was anticipated for around 2010, but sadly, the entire project concluded on December 12, 2014, prioritizing environmental safeguards. Challenges included managing the project's impact on the Han River and resettling approximately 330,000 people near Danjiangkou Reservoir and along the project's route. To make it easier, Chinese officials started relocating residents in 2009. The central route, covering 1,264 kilometers, initially provided 9.5 cubic kilometers of water annually. Future plans aim to increase this transfer to 12 to 13 cubic kilometers per year by 2030. The project, designed to maintain a flow of at least 6.2 cubic kilometers per year at all times, with 95% confidence, also faces limitations during dry years. In boosting the Danjongko Dam's height from 162 meters to 176.6 meters, the reservoir's water level rose from 157 meters to 170 meters above sea level. This elevation shift enabled gravity to guide the water into the canals, creating a continuous downhill flow to Beijing without the need for pumping stations. In December 2023, a landmark achievement was realized when the ambitious project successfully transferred a staggering 9.3 billion cubic meters of water from southern rivers to the nation's capital, as reported by the Beijing Water Authority, enough to fill 3.7 million Olympic-sized swimming pools. This monumental effort spanning nine years, has facilitated the delivery of 6.3 billion cubic meters of this precious resource for domestic consumption in Beijing. The project's impact extends far beyond mere water provision. It has played a crucial role in ecological restoration. The revitalization of numerous rivers and lakes has been a noteworthy outcome, leading to a significant enhancement in the city's biodiversity. This initiative stands as a testament to the commitment to sustainable environmental practices and the betterment of urban ecosystems. To preserve water quality, the industries are barred from establishing themselves within the reservoir's watershed. This aspect of the project not only addresses Beijing's water needs, but also exemplifies engineering prowess in creating a seamless, gravity-driven water flow over its impressive length. The west route of the South to North Water Diversion Project remains in the planning stage because it is a colossal ambition that requires careful planning. It aims to redirect approximately 200 cubic kilometers of water annually from six southwestern Chinese rivers to the Yangtze and Yellow Rivers. The targeted rivers, including the Mekong, Yalong Zhangbo, and Salween, traverse international borders raising concerns about potential impacts on countries like India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Addressing shared concerns around transboundary water resources and exploring mitigation measures remain critical steps towards building trust and achieving a sustainable outcome. Successful implementation could stimulate agricultural productivity, support urban development, and mitigate water stress. However, this ambitious vision comes at a staggering price. 
Estimates suggest the project could cost over $400 billion, raising concerns about its financial feasibility. Balancing potential benefits with long-term economic sustainability will be crucial in determining the future of this megaproject. While the Western Route's future remains uncertain, the commencement of construction on a supporting project in early 2024, coupled with ongoing international dialogues, offer glimmers of hope for its potential realisation. We'll continue to follow this evolving story and keep you updated on the latest developments. In 2008, the estimated construction costs for the eastern and central routes amounted to $37.44 billion. However, the government had allocated $7.9 billion, representing less than a quarter of the total cost at that time. This budget comprised $3.25 billion from the central government and special accounts, $1 billion from local governments, and nearly $2.5 billion in loans. By 2008, approximately $3.75 billion had already been spent on the construction of the eastern and central routes. $711 million and $3.09 billion, respectively. Yet, as the project progressed, costs surged dramatically, reaching a staggering $62 billion. So far, a substantial 18 billion cubic meters of water has been diverted from the Eastern Route Project, ERP, and the Middle Route Project, MRP, of the South to North Water Diversion Project, SNWDP. This diversion has significantly benefited residential and ecological communities, fostering economic prosperity and enhancing environmental conditions in the northern regions. The MRP in particular has played a crucial role in improving water self-purification capacity in Beijing. It achieved this by reducing groundwater extraction by 1 times 10 to the power 8 cubic meters, refreshing natural lakes and mitigating droughts and water logging. Beyond these ecological benefits, the project has stimulated regional economic development through the creation of employment opportunities, improved transportation networks, expanded irrigation schemes, and the growth of industries such as aquaculture, recreational fishing, and tourism. This multifaceted approach also addresses flood hazards effectively. Like every colossal project of this nature out there, the South to North Water Diversion Project has significant environmental and social implications. On the social front, the SNWDP has triggered demographic shifts as communities are uprooted and relocated. This massive engineering project has spurred economic development in recipient regions, but has also raised concerns about equitable resource distribution and access to water. The forced resettlement of over 330,000 people in central China has sparked criticism, with reports suggesting some villages were coerced into signing relocation agreements. This mass displacement raises ethical concerns about the project's social consequences. There are concerns about the long-term sustainability of the project, as increased water demand may exacerbate tensions over water allocation, potentially leading to social unrest. On the environmental front, the diversion of water from the Yangtze River to the arid northern regions has led to ecological disruptions. Altered water flow patterns impact aquatic ecosystems, potentially causing habitat loss and affecting the delicate balance of regional biodiversity. Even fish farmers at Dongping Lake reported adverse effects on their livelihoods, attributing fish deaths to the polluted Yangtze River water introduced through the project. Additionally, the construction of canals and tunnels for water transfer has necessitated large-scale land use changes, potentially leading to soil erosion and degradation. Displacement of communities along the water diversion route further exacerbates environmental concerns as resettled populations may struggle to adapt to new environments. Despite the SNWDP's proactive measures, including the regulation of environmental flow regimes, water pollution control, and comprehensive conservation and management strategies for water, soil, and biota, challenges persist. Urban and industrial water demands, coupled with requirements for irrigation, energy, and environmental protection, continue to complicate environmental, hydrological, socio-economic interactions. Additionally, 
the looming threats of groundwater recharge challenges and the complex interplay of increased land use and climate change in the region pose significant obstacles. As a consequence, the future trajectory of China's water resources system appears to be characterized by an imbalanced supply and demand scenario for both agriculture and the general population. The project, initially perceived as a transformative initiative, has faced criticism for its capital-intensive nature, biased economic analysis, and the ensuing cost overruns accompanied by construction delays and the alarming extinction of local biodiversity leading to a reduction in ecosystem-based goods and services. As we consider the future of the South-North Water Diversion Project, it's worth considering some questions. Can the project overcome its limitations and meet its goals? Is the cost worth the benefits it provides? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more mega projects.